everyone, my name is Kamara and this is Nadat. Uh, today we will be presenting about our two year long uh, project we had in Uzbek Wikipedia. Um, it's called Wiki Stipendia, which translates as a Wiki Scholarship. We'll talk about the lessons learned and our uh, future directions regarding this, our biggest and the most ambitious project so far we had in our local Wikipedia. Uh, to understand why this project means so much to us, you should uh, know that we've come a long way from having a blog Wikipedia. Back in 2012, I even had a presentation at Wikimania uh, brainstorming ideas how to grow a blog Wikipedia to today's situation where we have partnership with the government and it helped us tremendously to grow our Wikipedia. So what is Wikistipendia? Uh, it's a wiki project uh, aimed at improving the content of Uzbek Wikipedia uh, on our local Wikipedia and across other Wikimedia Foundation projects. Uh, it was organized in collaboration with the government entities and our local user group. Uh, it, <clears throat> it started in May 2012, uh, 2022 and so far we've had three phases and the third phase is still ongoing. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we had three phases. Our first phase was um, a seven month long edited bond, uh, during which time we realized it was a too long of a time frame to keep everyone motivated and interested. So we had to introduce uh, several interim uh, projects to keep everyone uh, interested. So having learned from the phase one, we started a phase two as a one month long edited bonds. It ran from June to December 2023, uh, and, and um, it included organizing tours to several uh, cities in our country where people created local high quality content and also met with the local students and organized meetups and raised awareness about Wikipedia. Uh, phase three is currently happening. It's uh, supposed to run until December. In this phase, we, uh, uh, we organized people in teams and we encouraging uh, peer review uh, for their articles. So th thanks to Wikipedia Stipendia, we ran uh, several successful sub-projects. For example, because we partnered with government, we were able to obtain a free license for our na national encyclopedia and to our national um, Uzbek language dictionary and it was released under Creative Commons license. Uh, we also worked on closing the gender gap on the Uzbek Wikipedia by creating content on women. Um, we had summer camps where people went in person and um, created articles together, ex exchanged knowledge and uh, experience. And most recently we had a Wikisport project in which we focused on um, Summer Olympics uh, in Paris, and we created a lot of articles related to that. We also had a Wiki education project called Wiki Talent, uh, in which uh, students were given a uh, task of creating articles related to their field of study um, in lieu of homework. Unfortunately, this project did not run well, but we learned lessons from it, and uh, this, this helps us to um, with our future directions. So, because of Wiki Stipendia, we, we discovered a new generation of uh, Wikimedians. Uh, these are the, some of the faces. Um, you may notice that one of them is in black and white. Unfortunately, he tried to keep us during the summer. Our friend Ali, um, but his name was, will live on Uzbek Wikipedia in his articles. Uh, another positive outcome uh, from Wiki Stipendia project is uh, our YouTube channel, Use Wiki. Um, uh, the youth agency sponsored the creation of the 13 professionally edited uh, videos, lessons. This YouTube channel has over 1,800 subscribers and 70,000, more than 70,000 views. And you may know, recognize his face, he's sitting next to me. He's our, he's our most hardworking admin. He took on this project himself and we thank him for that. Another big win we achieved due to Wiki Stipendia is uh, extensive media coverage, something we had not had at all before. And according to our data, we've been mentioned more than 250 times in, 
in the media. Uh, this is a photo of Mehr Nasser, which is our coordinator from our uh, government side. And thousands of photos were uploaded to comments as part of Wiki Tours. This is a photo uh, of a traditional headwear we have in Uzbekistan called Dokpe. And this is a logo of our user group in which you can see the similar pattern. So kind of uh, wearing Dokpe in this logo. In the next few slides, I will go over some of the statistics. Since the Wikipedia, a Wikispedia project, our Uzbek Wikipedia started being read for uh, more than Russian Wikipedia for the first time in history. So you can see the red one is Russian Wikipedia readership, the yellow one is Uzbek, and this is the start of Wikispedia project, and it's really, really improved uh, page views of Uzbek Wikipedia. But we don't have data past March 2023, the Community Foundation, for some reason, stopped providing the statistics, so we cannot see how it improved further. Hopefully, it did. So this is the user edits after the start of the Wikipedia project, which literally exploded. And this is the total um, page view numbers. You can see the upward trend from before as well, but after 2022, it really accelerated. And this is a number of active editors on Uzbek Wikipedia with more than five edits in the past month. And if before we had about 40 active editors on average, after Wikipedia, we had uh, oh, more than 260 active users. So yeah. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you for being with us uh, for the last session of the day. Um, <laughs> I think I'm best positioned to talk about the challenges because I have been involved in this project since the very beginning. I was one of the people they reached out to to discuss can we do something together, whether we could do something together. Um, so, given uh, that it's such a large project, I think it is unsurprising we have had some challenges, but some of them are, uh, I think, really uh, worth discussing. So we I would like to quickly uh, run through some of the challenges we've faced, and hopefully we will have some time for discussion, because we're really uh, interested in hearing uh, your thoughts about uh, you know, whether we're dealing with this challenge uh, properly, or maybe we should change something, because some of the challenges are quite, quite uh, difficult. So the first challenge that we have experienced is, of course, uh, we saw the graphs here, you know, when you have so many new editors all of a sudden, um, we found ourselves in a difficult position by we, I mean the experienced users. We had to train like an army of newcomers uh, in a very short period of time. The videos have been quite helpful, but you know that's not uh, sufficient because uh, simply we've had too many people joining the movement all of a sudden and they're eager to start contributing. They want to hit the ground running. They immediately start creating articles. There are not uh, many limitations at the beginning. Um, so that has been a big challenge. Uh, and the second challenge, directly related to the first one is, um, you know, even those users who are not directly involved in the project have kind of, some of them at least, have kind of, uh, you know, found themselves a bit uh, disheartened by the challenges and they are not as active as they used to be because maybe the amount of work that we have to do is uh, intimidating uh, to them. And finally, I will mostly talk about machine translation, which is uh, one application of AI, and AI has been a hot topic during this conference for everyone. Um, since I will give you some specific examples, uh, maybe I have to uh, start with, you know, uh, acknowledging that maybe to your languages, uh, 
Google or whatever service that you guys use translates more or less properly. In our case, it does a simply horrendous job of translating any text, basically. So here we have um, an excerpt from an English Wikipedia article about this uh, dap and dish, also called dap and glass, which is used uh, you know, in dentistry and other applications. And in the next slide, we'll see how it turned out in the, in the Uzbek uh, version. So eyeglasses are used apparently in dentistry for mixing medicaments. So <laughs> I guess uh, mixing a dental filling on, on eyeglasses right now here. So that's literally uh, an actual example from an article that I saw like a couple of days ago, which has been deleted. This is just one example. Um, and when you have such cases on a mass scale, people notice. And we have uh, a one uh, in, in, uh, incident uh, of people noticing uh, such horrible <laughs> translation. Uh, happened uh, unfortunately during the summer uh, Olympic uh, Games. Diora um, Kildiorova became the first uh, uh, Uzbek woman to win uh, a gold medal in the Summer Olympics. So, you know, everyone was reading about her. But an article that had been created before, to be fair, Wikisbanda started, stated that she had taken part in a world war, um, as you can see here in the Summer World War Games. I mean, not properly World War, but Summer World War Games. So this was picked up by people on social media, you know, ridiculed, uh, obviously. And we've had other cases, uh, for, for instance, so these individual cases add up, and that, that those cases have really damaged our reputation. Uh, I feel strongly that our Wikipedia has suffered a lot because of this uh, sub uh, power uh, content. So here, a uh, uh, Twitter user is basically saying that uh, the Uzbek Wikipedia is a pile of garbage, as you can see uh, on Twitter, uh, in response to, the, to this tweet uh, that I that I've actually uh, posted. Um, and they said they've been chasing numbers, and not, uh, not substance, you know, they're after quantity, not quality, which is uh, Fair in a sense, but I think uh, that's not all what this project is about. And another final example uh, is here a user saying uh, they noticed uh, uh, an article about uh, village as a form of human, human settlement, uh, which was a very bad machine translation. It doesn't make any sense. I, I can't understand it. I mean, it's that bad. And they're saying, you know, oh, how much money, public money uh, have they spent on this project? Kind of uh, thing. You know, they kind of being sarcastic here. And one thing I want to point out here, we already had a, a proper article taken from the National Encyclopedia about uh, villages, like the concept of village. But this user overwrote the existing article with this horrible machine translation. So if someone is knowledgeable about this tool, content translation, I wonder if it should be technically impossible to overwrite an existing article, especially for new users. But this is just a specific example. Um, so, how are we dealing with this? Um, we, rather late, but this year we decided, we're into our third year, we decided we would revise our speedy deletion criteria, by the way, partly inspired by the Turkish Wikipedia. Uh, Русский Википедия тоже, да, критерии высокого удаления статья не на русском языке или машинный перевод. We did not have this uh, clause that, that, you know, if, uh, if, uh, if an article is a bad, you know, if, if it's bad machine translation, uh, it can be deleted. We didn't have it as a criterion. We added that criter criterion and now we're deleting you know, articles that have uh, machine translation elements, like we are deleting them mercilessly, but we started it rather late, but better late than never. Number two, I initiated discussions, like we had like a community-wide discussion to de disable content translation for inexperienced users. The community supported, uh, folks on Fabricator helped us. Now only experienced users can use the tool. We also 
did this late, but you know, there were so many uh, challenges that uh, it had to it had to be done at that, at some point, but it just took longer. And finally, you know, I have been behind efforts to convince, push, beg, uh, <laughs> fight, you know, with people, <laughs> uh, just to convince them, come on, let's let's help, let's let's. As a community, clean up our Wikipedia. So that's ongoing. It needs more work. So these are some of the issues we're taking. Please take note. We can come back to this slide and maybe you have some ideas. You know what else can be done? Because right now, I don't want to take a guess. But when we started off, we had 140,000 articles. Now we have around 300,000 articles. So that's a difference of 160,000 articles. It could be that we have 6,000 machine translated articles, it could be we have 60,000. So I honestly don't know, but for sure it is over 60,000, or over 6,000, because we have a category uh, you know, of articles that literally says articles, what is it, unreviewed, artic pages with unreviewed uh, content translation or pages with unreviewed translation. So we have for a fact that over 5,000, 6,000 uh, horrible articles, but it could be way, way more. So we need more strategies. We need, we need you know, some new ideas on how we can handle. And keep in mind that experienced users are only a handful. I, mean, I don't know, I, I don't, like taking a wild guess, maybe 20, maybe 30 max experienced users. So what else is being done? Um, I initiated this idea of rewarding or like, you know, What's the word? Um, like featuring uh, users who haven't abused the tool, who like the good Wikimedians who haven't used machine translation or who have used it, like you know, uh, properly without creating a horrible content. So we have. You can you might you might recognize him. He's one of the eight uh, people who was that was who were featured in a, in, in an earlier slide. So I'm very proud of these folks who are you know real, true Wikimedians. And I also tried like some radical things. I kind of <laughs> sang um, a spoof song, uh, making fun of uh, people who use machine translation at the closing ceremony uh, of the first phase. You know, there were like government officials. There were like I don't know, like lots of people. It's on YouTube, and um, I specifically, especially made fun of uh, students at a certain university where they tried wiki education which failed horribly because they created literally thousands of machine translated articles, so it didn't go down as a them, obviously. They hated me for it, but anyway. Um, so, uh, what, is, what, what, what are our plans? Um, so, obviously we have to continue cleaning up all this mess in the coming, in the next few years, maybe decades, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, and we would like to refocus now on editor retention. Now that we've discovered so many new faces, let's you know build their capacity. Let's help them, um, you know, learn new skills. Some of them have already taken part in Turkic, uh, you know, conferences in CEE. Like they hit the ground running. They were like newcomers. I've been on, in the movement. Actually, yesterday was my wiki birthday. <laughs> uh, Fifteen years ago, I started contributing. I haven't let off, <laughs> let off since. <laughs> but uh, so the, these newcomers, some of them are really amazing. They have, you know, they're like actual members of the movement, so we're happy, but more work needs to be done. And we need to prioritize other projects. Wikipedia is like the, you know, the biggest project of the foundation, obviously. And we have done good work uploading photos to comments, um, like truly amazing photos, like 10,000 photos at least have been uploaded to Commons throughout the project. Uh, amazing photos, like f the first photos of the famous Jewish synagogue in Bukhara, like absolutely amazing photos. And now we need to work more on other projects such as Wikidata, where I am quite active personally, but our newcomers, they're kind of aware of it, but not too much, so that's what we're planning to do uh, you know, in the coming. Uh, years and hopefully, um, you know, we will uh, receive uh, some support from the foundation in our efforts. But honestly, I think uh, the Wikisipenda project has been a very good success, and I think it has run its course. 
and probably we will not be continuing it into next year because, uh, as I said, you know, we have done uh, what we could do. It's you know, it's always uh, nice to receive such kind of support. Uh, literally, the government has, I think, allocated. I am not sure about the figures, but thousands of dollars. You know, all, in the previous seasons, all the people who won awards, they were literally awarded like cash prizes. You know, like literally cash Uzbek swings. So. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of competition, and one final note, um, I kind of understand why students, some, I say students because most of the participants have been students, maybe I should say participants, felt compelled to use machine translation, maybe because they were under pressure, maybe they wanted the money, you know, like they, they actually have like gigantic prizes, like the first prize got like a five thousand dollar something oh. like <laughs> at the end of the first season uh, for the seven month editathon it was a giant editathon but five thousand dollars is like hey good money um, right like great money so unfortunately you know my uh, idea about featuring them on our, on our telegram channel which has like 400 people like praising them is it as uh, exciting as five thousand dollars cash well $5,000 cash in Uzbek Sums, right? So, um, <laughs> $5,000 in Uzbek Sums. So, um, we are doing our best, but I'm sure we can do more. And I think uh, our last slide, and I'm happy uh, with the timing, we've spent 20 minutes exactly presenting, and I would like to spend the, the last third of our uh, uh, lecture here discussing, getting feedback, I'm sure you guys have lots of questions, hopefully, even though you might be tired. <laughs> so that's where we stand. Uh, please share your ideas. If you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to discuss, answer. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Oh, yeah, because I don't have a So I'm a call from the community of Ukraine, and we had a very similar like, problem in source with machine translations. Uh -huh. So what we know, like when we started organizing very starting of contests, we didn't have exactly prices, but we had a very similar amount of like campaigning enthusiasm in the community. So we literally any article contest in Ukraine on Wikipedia attracts like one thousand articles. So that's like quite huge. But we realized that there are or there is a concentration of like maybe five people who issue machine translation to create like amazing numbers of articles of amazingly terrible quality. So what we decided is to say, if like few of your articles are machine translations, you're completely eliminated from the contest. And this kind of pulled down the level of machine translations in the community. Mm -hmm. That's like what we learned because we also know, we also had like people making final pass in the beginning. Especially, when you, but especially like when you know there is a government money at stake, people are like even more sensitive government money and to uh, like foundation money. But my question is, so like for this prizes, is it the government who manages the prizes for you or do you have a say or input on like what prizes you want to award for whom, for what? Because that's like always tricky in this like government sponsored contest, like how much freedom do you have to organize things and what did they impose to you? Excellent question. Um, so during the first phase, I had this unfortunate idea of we're going to just assess all these art articles on a voluntary basis, which was a horrible idea. Imagine like a seven month marath marathon, hundreds of people creating content. It was impossible to do it on a voluntary basis. So they hired some of our experienced users and those experienced users, I think they, they were still overworked, uh, had to assess all the Articles that were created, we used Fountain and then we gave up because there were too many articles, Fountain wasn't coping. So we had a say in kind of ranking the users, but in they, the government obviously had the final say whether they wanted to reward a specific user or not. Now, over the past two years, it has changed slightly. It's not a gigantic seven month marathon, it's like shorter marathons, but they still rely on us to suggest, like, you know, good uh, contributors. And lately, we've been specifically pushing them, can we exclude uh, abusers 
from the competition altogether. I personally uh, was behind efforts to create a database of users who have abused the, the tool, who have created horrible content, and the list currently has 63 people. 63 people. Uh, of this 63, 25 have had their entire contribution deleted. 20, their contributions were so bad, as a community we decided it cannot be fixed. We have deleted all of their articles. That's why we crossed the 300,000 uh, mark in July, but right now it's slightly below 300,000 because we're just, you know, tirelessly deleting uh, content. So this list, I specifically told, you know, our partners in the government, here is like a black list of people we would like to, you know, eliminate it from the uh, from the competition. Hopefully, they will take that into consideration and they will not be rewarded at least for this phase. So we have tried that and we are trying that. But I'm sure there's more that can, could be done. And how many uh, participants could you cover while uh, implementing wikis to India? And how many of them still being active? Like, That's a very good question. I have been behind, like we have produced <laughs> a lot of data. I, I'm trying to keep you know, some numbers, like we have specific dedicated pages. I can actually open it up. Uh, this is a Blacklist, by the way. Oh, <laughs> this is the blacklist. <laughs> this is the blacklist. Word of shame. <laughs> Word of shame. Um, yeah. So, um, like, we have, we have so many f numbers. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to give you like a, a specific number because we have had so many projects. Like, one number is how many people we invited to wiki camps. There have been seven wiki camps. Mm. And at least 1,000 people have taken part in those wiki camps. But how many are of them like uh, are still uh, in Wikipedia like, involved? Uh, that goes. Uh, I think we go back to the slide uh, uh, which Kamara mentioned, like number of active editors. Mm. We have 260 active editors right now. So before the average was around 40. Mm -hmm. Now we have 260 active users who have made at least five edits in the past month. Mm -hmm. But if you mean like active, active, like crazy active, <laughs> uh, maybe 20, which is great for a smaller community, yeah. like Uzbek, like Uzbek Wikipedia. I want to add, I know a little bit about the program. I think the important thing is that the lower of the projects are across many months. Yeah. So it's not just students come to the camp and maybe edit after or not. The competition continues, I think I understand correctly. Yeah. So they are active just because the project is designed this way, which is which is good. Maybe it means the habit stays later. Yeah, I think it's natural and other Wikimedians have said this uh, that um, if you train like a hundred people, if you try to introduce a hundred people, recruit a hundred people, if you're lucky, ten of them will be interested. Yeah. You know? Um, but usually maybe five yeah. out of a hundred. I think that's like a guess, but I think it's a good guess, like an educated guess. So we're happy with the number of active users we have, but we are unhappy with the amount of uh, subpar quality that has been produced over the three years. I think that that mostly was written about some kind of maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask uh, uh, all of this? Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, how much uh, machine translations are still to be deleted uh, from Wikipedia? And secondly, how do you see the Uzbek uh, project after five years or so? Uh, which are the long term goals of the project? Can you repeat the first question, please? Uh, how much articles are uh, still to be deleted uh, out of those uh, machine translations? How much are they deleted? I uh, articles are to be deleted uh, yet. Uh, how many do we have to be deleted? Yes. I mentioned it actually, uh, I'm not sure, I'm sure it's over 6,000 because, yes, it says like pages with unreviewed machine translation category, they're in that category, but taking a wild guess could be 60,000 because we've created 160,000 new articles. Worst case scenario, I hope 60,000, but I know for sure it's over 6,000. 
As for your second question, in five years, it's hard to know. As Amar mentioned at the very beginning, we used to be blocked in Uzbekistan, and I used to I presented the, as an Amario about you know how I was kind of you know trying to do something about it and you know how we were trying to use HTTPS instead of HTTP because the blockage wasn't very robust. But now we have all of a sudden because of changes in government policy to support content in Uzbek, the government is actually supporting us. So I. I have a hard time guessing, but hopefully the community will be larger, will be you know, a more established community, and there will be almost no subpar machine translated content. Maybe one more question, two more? Yeah. I don't speak a lot, so uh, you should be also aware that experienced user also use translation. Right now, in Slovenia Wikipedia, we have a featured article on the main page. A day before I came here, I noticed from a very prominent user, he selected, he said, okay, it is good, you don't need to check. But now, a day before we came here, I started to check. It was machine translation. It was about French doctor. And there was a sentence that he paid his, how do you call it, right, his books. I just, I was so, it was on the main page. So I, you have to be careful about it. I fully agree with you. Unfortunately, I have, in our, what to do? In our discussions about people who have abused uh, machine translation, there are discussions about people with advanced rights who have abused the tool yeah. and with specific exact examples. So I, enough people hate me already, so I'm not raising this issue for now, but down the road, I hope People who don't do, who don't fix their machine translation will lose their rights, hopefully. Yep. And you had a question? Yeah? Uh, I'm interested in how you communicate this to first time users who, okay, they made the offense, they didn't follow the rules, they did bad work, but what was the, the way you communicated? Because in Croatia we were, for example, preparing uh, first mini marathon for just two days with 50 women. We spent like half of the summer preparing for it, getting them together, getting them trained online before they meet physically. And it was about women's health, like super uh, huge uh, gap. But all the, well, all, few of the younger admins who overly identify with the small Croatian Wikipedia think that accepting 40, 50 articles in the same time on Friday night was some kind of invasion of whatever. And he literally, on his own, in real time, overnight changed the policy, changed the protocol for translation, disabled it, started deleting articles, and only through other people we managed to save the project so not all of the participants are traumatized by how their work was deleted from one day to another. Like there was no notice, there was no change of policy announcement, none of these things. It was just like penny pattern from admin who overly commits to some kind of equality, but he didn't bother over thousands of other articles that were ridiculous. Yep. Uh, we're over time, literally one minute. Uh, I will respond to your question. Uh, excellent question. Uh, we. Luckily, do not change policy in the, like, you know, on a random, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, without discussion, community consensus, we always discuss, you know, when we want to introduce some new policy, that's good. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of reacting to such users, because uh, we were so overworked, I'm responding to some users who created machine translation content two years ago, but I'm still posting on their talk pages. Please refrain from using machine translation. Here's a specific example of a horrible translation that you did. I have deleted your articles. I, I, I'm literally writing on their talk pages. I'm encouraging others to do so. But if they don't do it, I don't blame them because we don't have enough time. And we are in a unique situation because some people who took part last, at like two years ago, you know, involved in the project, they have kind of left the project, which is kind of, I don't know how to feel about it, but they created mostly machine translated content. So they don't feel bad about it because they're not coming in sense back, and I hope they don't in a sense. <laughs> but yeah, that's how we've been dealing. And finally, one thought that I wanted to share is that 
I wanted to use this machine translation, like, like why are people using it so much? So it takes seconds to translate an article, like with machine translation, literally seconds. And I translated this article, like the entry of an article on the English Wikipedia. One, two, three, four paragraphs. It took me, I timed myself, two hours to translate it without the machine translation tool. The, the machine translation tool can do it in seconds. Like, it takes a human to do it in two hours. Like, I'm a professional translator. I've been doing translation work for 10 years. I'm editing the translation of a book right now. I've been doing it for 10 years. Even, even so, it took me, like, two hours. So, to recap, to, like, just finish off, I think, machine translation is a bad idea. I feel very strongly about it. Uh, I didn't hear much, uh, many thoughts that would say otherwise. You know, there are, like, some cases where you can use it like properly, I don't see any cases where I can use it properly. So I want to finish on that note. Machine translation is horrible. Thank you very much.